Hi there, Reverend Monica Driscoll with Unity Spiritual Center near the Villages. And this is our fourth of six lessons uh, from the book, What Are You? by Amelia Shanklin. And this week's work is titled, Your Objective. Your Objective. Now, last week, we really focused on life pays. And we spoke about our consciousness, about what we give our attention to is what life pays us. So if we're in a state of angst, we get eggs. If we're in a state of joy and love, we find joy and love. So that's very simplistic, but the truth is where we spend our time and our consciousness is what our life unfolds. This chapter, Your Objective, is, is more about the single line of focus of being so clear on what it is you want to have happen and then letting nothing get in the way of that objective your objective. What is your objective? Why are you here? And some of us have been asking this question all of our lives. Some of us know what that is, but most of us, we kind of just plug along doing what's placed in front of us to do the best we can and not really having a plan or an objective in mind. I remember many, many moons ago hearing of the story of a man who packs his bags and his objective is to go from Seattle, Washington to Miami, Florida. That's the objective. So he packs his bag and he gets to the airport and they say, where do you wanna go? And instead of saying Miami, he says, wherever. His objective is Miami, but then he doesn't follow through in the middle portion of his objective. So he flies and he, he gets on a plane and he finds himself in Boston and he gets to Boston and he says, I'm not in Miami. Well, no, he took a flight to Boston. He missed his objective. He got sidetracked with his objective. We allow the fictitious world to infill us and say that our objective is not real, is not worthy, is not big enough. We're not smart enough. We're not this, we're not that. And so we talk ourselves out of the objective. When in fact, he really wants to go to Miami. That's the plan, that's the objective. So he's in Boston and he catches a plane and they ask him, where do you want to go? And he says, Miami, by golly. <clears throat> so he gets on the plane and he gets off the plane and he finds out he's in Houston, Texas. How did this happen? How did, it, how did I get in Houston, Texas? I wanted to go to Miami. I thought that's where I was going. But he took a side trip. Unbeknownst to him, his consciousness said, I know you say you want to go to Miami, but you've always wanted to go to Houston. And there he is, he finds himself in Houston. And then he goes to the airport with his packed bag and he says, I wanna go to Miami. And with that, the clerk says, which flight do you wanna leave on? Two o'clock or the four o'clock directly to Miami. And he chooses Miami and he finally gets there. But he had to go to Boston, to Texas, and then to Miami. He had to zigzag his way because he had to stay focused on his objective. And when you lose focus, you end up being someplace else and not where you say you want to be. You see, because if we stay focused on the goal and the aim, we get there. We get there. And Amelia Shanklin talks about there is no defeat. We've learned the process to get there. We can change our minds. You know, our objective can change. But it's not because it's a defeat. It's because we've made a decision to change our objective or to postpone it, you know, and to come back to it a later date. You know, so many people talk about getting a career later in their life that brought them so much joy. They always knew that they wanted to be a doctor, but they let everything else in the middle get in the way. I was just hearing a wonderful story from a person who is, is a hospice nurse and loves her work. Now she's long gone retired, but she's still doing that work as part of her service back to the community because her objective is clear, is to be with the families as they go through the grieving process. But she didn't do that until much later in her life. There were all these other roads to get there. And so finally she got clear and now that's what she does. She's in service to that objective. When you are in service to your objective, nothing gets in the way. The fictitious world starts to minimize and diminish itself. You're no longer giving attention to what isn't real, such as time or even talent. 
You see, because time and talent change. They're not the core of us. Remember, we have the, the real and the fictitious within us. What's real? What's real within you? What's real in you is that you have the mind of God. That's freeing. With your mind of God, you can do anything. You have access to everything. Everything. There are no lack of in the real world. And so you can follow through with your objective and you take in nothing but that which lends itself to your objective. Where are you going? Are you going to Miami or are you going to Boston and Houston? You have to stay focused on what it is you say you want. You know, we hear a lot of people, and we've, we've talked about this in other lessons. We hear people say, well, I want world peace. And then they go off and they march and protest and they beat a, bump, a drum about how unjust the world is. It's not peace. Their objective isn't matching the behavior that they say they want. Does your behavior match your objective? Do you have an objective? You see, are we letting our the time, uh, our physical inabilities? You know, we've all heard the stories of people who have physical disability of some sort and they strive up on it. And we're so impressed with their, their tenacity and their objective. A, a video went around uh, Facebook this past week. It's an older video, I've seen it several years ago. It's a child who was born with no low legs or arms and he's climbing up a playground set of stairs so he can go down the slide. Didn't take him, you know, 30 seconds like it would any other child with all their limbs, but he never gave up. His objective was clear. Nobody helped him. He didn't want anybody's help. He slowly climbed every one of those metal stairs to get to the objective so he'd go down the slide. He stayed focused and we're inspired by those kinds of people. We go, wow, look at the, the, the determination and the clarity that this child had, a child, four, five years old, you know? But we as adults have talked us out of our, our own tenacity to do something. And that's the fictitious world coming in. That's the fictitious world telling us for some reason, we don't believe we can. And God says, if you're called, then you should go do that. I will be there for you, for you are the mind of God. So if that idea comes to you, then you're operating with the, the mind of God. And that's the divine within us that gently pushes us in a direction that brings us joy, that brings us a sense of, yes, yes, I am furthering the universe in some direction. You know, we, we think about Benjamin Franklin or Edison, you know, if he had taken all the failures in the attempt to create the light bulb, my goodness gracious, he didn't see them as failures. He saw them as stepping stones to the objective. Very different, very different code by which he operated. And because of that, beautiful things have come out of that. It's huge. I mean, who would have ever thought that this little tiny thing could operate a cell phone, you know? And yet somebody had an objective and stayed with it. You know, I think about this past week, Elon Musk has offered $10 million or $100 million, something outrageous number for somebody to invent something. There's an, a motivator now. There's this incentive to do it. John Kennedy said, come on, let's go to the moon. Let's make it happen. And we made it happen. We all got together with the same objective. And that's what this material is about. It's about staying focused. And I, I loved the, the side, uh, sidebar or the turn she took in the chapter about prayer, about how prayer works. You know, it's, it's funny. A prayer chaplain in our ministry calls a, a member... They have a designated group of people that they call and they call and say, hi, this is your prayer chaplain. I'd like to pray with you today. What's on your mind? And they do a prayer. Now the prayer chaplain doesn't call back a week later to see if the prayer was answered. The prayer chaplain knows that they have put into motion the prayer, the need, shall we call it? Although I don't like to go there often. And, and you'll notice that in our groups, we, when we say that let's have a prayer, 
What do you, my question to you is, what do you want more of? Because then we're giving our attention to what you want in your life and not things that you don't want. You don't want to focus on the reason you need the prayer, you know, and many of us will go there. We want to tell the story behind the need of the prayer. The story is fictitious. It's real in your life, but in the world of agreement, it's fictitious. It's not the core of who you are. You see, we can never pray for another person. I know this is contrary to what we've always been told. Well, just pray for that person. You know, when you call silent unity and you express you've got a concern for another person, another person's just been diagnosed with something and you're calling silent unity and you say, my, my friend, my friend is going through this, this awful experience and they will divert you to your fear. They will pray for your trust in the process. It'll shift because you're the one actually calling for prayer. And they will include the other person because that's our expectation of that. But your real objective is to not feel what you're feeling, the sorrow, the discontent with your own life because this other person is, has taken on a negative turn. You see, because that's the fictitious world. You see, we have created this environment where we think we can control the mind of another human being. We can't ever. You cannot dictate to another human being what they can or cannot think and say. We can impose penalties. We can invoke the, the fear factor in there. Yes, all that's true, but it's fictitious. It's not of the real world. You are in charge of your mind. So if I'm praying for you, you have to want that prayer from me, which means you're receiving the prayer. I am not giving it to you. I'm not doing anything to cause that prayer for fruition. The only person that can cause prayer to be answered is ourselves, is ourselves, you see. And if we focus in our prayer work on what somebody wants more of, it changes the directory of our minds to the positive aspects of God and not these fictitious aspects that we blame God for. God answers all prayers through our thinking, through our consciousness. We get to choose what we're listening to. And only you can decide what you want to water, fruit, and flourish in that objective. So what's your objective? And she ends the chapter by talking about being in service. Wow, being in service. And being in service is a, can be defined many, many different ways. We have the one extreme where there's Mother Teresa, and then we have the other extreme where we have a hospice nurse who simply picks up the phone and says, how can I serve you? Wow, you're being in service to another person because of your gift. There is no definitive place in life for you while you keep your mind purposeless. You have no place to go if you don't have a purpose and an objective. It's boring. You're the one sitting out, looking out on the window day after day, wanting to know why no one will visit you. Your purpose is not, your purpose at that point is to feel sorry for yourself. Your purpose is to, to wallow in that. And is that what you want more of? You'll say, you'll say your prayer request might be something like, I wish I had more people in my life. And then we turn down invitations to meet people. You see, you're saying one thing and then your behavior is putting you in a different direction. And then we complain that we, our prayers aren't answered. You see, we have to be willing to stay focused on what it is you want. You want more friends in your life. You must get out there and create them. They're waiting for you. If you want a different career, you need, to, you need to say, what brings you joy? What brings you excitement? Because in that excitement, you will be in service. You see, we have this wonderful spiritual community. There are so many ways to serve, so many different facets of your beingness that bring you joy. You see, because when we get back together and we start to, to think about what it is and how we want to serve our community, we get to ask ourselves the question, what brings me joy in my community? What is that? 
you know, maybe it's doing dishes, you know, or maybe it's standing out front, helping people find where the bathrooms are, or maybe you want to be an usher. What brings you a joy so that when you go home after that moment, you feel good about yourself? Because that's what you want to do. Because when you bring joy to your life, you're bringing joy to everyone around you. You see, your purpose and objective will never take away from somebody else's purpose and objective. You're either working together on that objective or there's two separate objectives. There's no competition. There's no, nobody can tell you you can't do it. Only you determine whether you can do it or not. You want to have that fire in you to do it. And Amelia Shanklin is reminding us that our objective is purposeless, purposeful, not purposeless. When we are purposeless, we go nowhere and we feel defeated and we feel lonely and we feel like something's missing in our lives. You see, because when we work in the God's world, not in the time world, we achieve wonderful objectives. You can finish one objective, pick up another one. And you can continue to have purpose and objective in your life long past your working years, long past your, you know, being in the corporate ladder structure, long past in what people would say, you know, I get it all the time. Why are you still working? Why don't you retire? I'm like, I've been called to do this. This is my purpose. And I'm good with that. I remember many, many years ago of being asked, before I signed on to go into the ministerial program, they asked me a simple question. Is this the pearl of great price for you? If it's not, don't do it. The world doesn't need you if it, you're not going to be focused on it. And I took that to heart. I focused on it. I sat in prayer with it and said, seriously, what is my pearl of great price? What is it that brings me joy? And I went, wow, seeing the light bulb go off on an, in another human being, when you give them that moment to see that their life is more, there is so much personal satisfaction in that. It brings me such joy. And I'm very grateful that I'm able to express myself in this manner. We've all had careers. We've all are working on our careers, whatever we are in our endeavors, grazing grandchildren, you know, making our home as comfortable as possible for anybody who enters it. Whatever your purpose is, don't let anything or anybody get in your way. Don't let that fictitious world tell you you're not good enough. You have the mind of God in you. Let that divine mind guide you and all that needs to be done to achieve your purpose. What is your purpose? And that's the question for today's lesson. Maybe you've had a purpose and you fulfilled it. Are you living in that state that, well, I already been there, done that? Really? You're still breathing. You're still in this human element. If your purpose is to just to love and serve and know God more, and then we get to say no to all those things that do not meet that purpose. What's your mission? What do you want to have happen in your life? What's your objective? And are you saying no to all those things that prevent that objective from being fulfilled in your life? If not, start saying no. Start asking for that wisdom that's within you to guide you on this journey, on this objective. If you want to climb Mount Everest, then go do that. Then start training for it. You want to run a marathon, do that. You know, it's it's a lot like your bucket list. If you, What's the point of having a bucket list if you have no intention of ever doing any of them? No, I hope not. What's your bucket list? What things do you want to achieve in this life and have it be in service to something or somebody in some way? Because service, being ministered to rather than being ministered from, big difference. I minister to you and you receive those gifts or you choose not to receive those gifts. You are always a choice, but the gift nevertheless is there. 
what's your gift? What's your gift? And it doesn't have to be this big deal. It could be just the notion that you're thinking above the line and that you're practicing true principles of what I want more of in my life. And you stay focused on that and we don't let the outer world interrupt us with that. That's why it's so important that we turn the news off every once in a while, get a fresh perspective, reground ourselves in what is it that I want to achieve and minimize the distractions, minimize those notions that tell you you can't do it, whether it's in your consciousness or it's somebody physically in your life saying, don't do that. Come on, come on, play poker out with me. Let's ride the golf cart around. Let's go get a beer. You can have that as your objective. Then be joyful in it. Be joyful in what it is you do. If it doesn't bring you joy, stop doing it. And you can shift. You can shift. Your objective might be that everything you do brings you joy. You can do that. You choose. You choose what you want to bring joy to your life. So what's your purpose? So when we break out into groups or we do this as a, a full, full group, remember, it's an open mic. Say what you'd like to say about it. What you're thinking about it. You're in a safe space. You could say what you want to say. You know, everyone's very respectful and there's no reason for them to share anything that you're sharing outside the room because there's no point. This is about you individually. What's your purpose? What drives you? What makes you feel good? Go with the spirit of that. And if you need to change course, change course. Pack your bags for what you want to have happen. And don't sit around with your head in the sand doing nothing. Do something and make it your objective and your purpose for being here. Thank you and Godspeed.